Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 7.4. Number one, we're asked to put an equation in standard form and graph. And we're asked to find the center, vertices, and foci. So if that's not enough of a hint, um, we look at the equation, we notice we have two variables squared, and the coefficients are different. And they're being added together. Okay, so if we have both variables squared with different coefficients, but they have the same sign, in this case they're both positive, then that means that unless we have a degenerate case, we've got ourselves an ellipse on our hands. And the fact that we're asking for center vertices and foci, well, that's another dead giveaway. We got ourselves an ellipse. All right, so we look at the equation. 4x squared plus y squared minus 6y plus 5 equals 0. I think back to the standard equation of an ellipse. x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And we have to fit this equation to this form. So the first thing we're going to have to do is get all the x's and y's together and toss the 5 on the other side. 4x squared plus y squared minus 6y, and I'm going to subtract 5 off both sides. Now I need to go off and complete the square. The x's square is already complete. I need to complete the square on the y. So I'm going to leave some room. The coefficient of y squared here is a 1, so I don't need to factor anything out. I take half of this, which is minus 3. And so I would have 4x squared plus y squared minus 6y plus negative 3 squared. So what did I add to the left-hand side of the equation? Negative 3 squared. So what do I have to add to the right-hand side of the equation? Well, negative 3 squared. I simplify this and I get 4. All right, so I have perfect squares on both sides. Now I need everything equal to 1. So to accomplish that, I'm going to divide both sides by the 4. I'll do the division term by term, and I get x squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared over 4 equals 1. Now you may say, well, it doesn't quite look like this format. Um, what's the h and what's the a? Well, if you want to be pedantic, that's fine. We love the, uh, the uh, pedants. It's x minus 0 quantity squared. Oops. Got a little out of control here. It's x minus 0 quantity squared over 1 squared. Oops, plus y minus 3 squared over 4. Equals 1. All right. Okay, so we read off the center of an ellipse just as we do the center of the circle. So the center of this thing is 0, 3. Go off to the axis here. That's the center. All right, from the center, how far do we go in each direction? I look at the number underneath the x and I take the square root of that. The square root of 1 is 1. That tells me how far to go in the x direction from the center. So I move one unit to the right and one unit to the left. Now I look at the number underneath the y squared part. That's 4. Take the square root of it. That tells me I'm going to go two units up and two units down. I'm going to dot in the box. Now for ellipses, we're going to stay inside the box. And, well, okay, we're going to call that an ellipse. Okay, what are the vertices? 
Well, we have to look to see which direction we went farther in, the x direction or the y direction. We moved one unit in the x direction, but we moved two units in the y direction. So that means that the major axis is going to be along the y axis. That means that the vertices are these points. So the definition of vertices are the, the points on the ellipse which lie on the major axis. So I started at 0, 3, and I went up two units, so I went to 0, 5. I started at 0, 3, went down two units, and ended up at 0, 1. So those are the vertices. What about the foci? Well, for ellipses as well as hyperbolas, the C is the key. You can't spell foci without the C. How do we get the C? C, remember, is the distance from the center to each focus. We always take the square root of the larger of these two squares minus the smaller. In this case, it's 4 minus 1, which is radical 3, which is roughly 1.7-ish. So once again, we start at the center, and we go 1.7-ish up to one focus, and 1.7-ish down to the other focus. So where do we end up? We start at 0, 3 and move up radical 3. That's going to get us to 0, 3 plus radical 3. If I start at 0, 3 and move down radical 3, it's 0, 3 minus radical 3. So that'll do it for number 1. All right, number 2, we're asked to find the equation of an ellipse with foci at 1, 0, and 3, 0, and a vertex at the origin. So it's always best, when in doubt, graph these out. So we've got a vertex, or a focus rather, at 1, 0, and 3, 0. And we've got a vertex at the origin, 0, 0. So let's think back to our standard equation for an ellipse x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Let's see what we know about this ellipse straight away. Well, the first thing we note is, since the major axis lies along the x-axis, we know for sure that the a squared must be bigger than the b squared. It must be stretched farther along the x direction than the y direction. So that's one thing we want to make a note of. The second thing is we know exactly where the center is because the center is always the midpoint of the foci. And since the foci are at 1, 0, and 3, 0, we know that the center has to be at 2, 0. What else do we know? How far did I go from the center in the x direction to get to the vertex? I went 2 units. That means that the a has got to be 2, so a squared is 4. What else do I know? I know that from the center to each focus, it's 1 unit. That tells me that c is 1. And since I know a squared has got to be bigger than b squared in this case, I know that 1 is a squared minus b squared. The a squared I know is 4, so if I solve this and square both sides, I get b squared is 3. So now I have everything I need for my final answer. Well, the center is at 2, 0. That means the h is 2 and the uh, k is 0. So I have x minus 2 squared over a squared, which is 4, plus y minus k, in this case 0 squared, over b squared, which is 3, equals 1. And then I can simplify. And get my final answer. So that'll do it for number 2.